Hey everybody, welcome back to my shop. We have an interesting video today. I thought it would be really helpful to you guys to show you guys how I'm gonna make the quarter inch groove for the back in these upper bookcases on large pieces like this, uh, casework and stuff like that. You can't always do it on the table saw. And the reason I'm choosing not to do it on the table saw is for the fact that if you sight down pieces of plywood, now, no matter you know how much you spend on plywood, this is sixty dollars a sheet. Uh, sometimes I get plywood that's ninety dollars a sheet, American made, cherry or red oak, and things like that, and they still have a tendency to bow after a while. Now, if you sight down this board, this started off real straight when I got it from the hardwood dealer, and now you can see it looks like a banana. A couple of things you need to do. You need to be really thorough and aware of how you're going to situate your pieces for problems like this that occur. Now, usually what I do is I always like to take the bow and have that towards the outside of the case because especially with this, it's going to have, this upper case is gonna have fixed bookshelves. What that's gonna do is once I screw everything together, those shelves will help and assist in pulling that case in both sides of bow. So I have both bows going outwards. So instead of fighting the bow and having the bow go the inside and then having to pull the piece backwards the other way, what this is gonna do is gonna squeeze it together when I fix those shelves in the center. So you'll have a perfectly square case referencing off the top and the bottom and those fixed shelves can squeeze it together. So now, why don't I do this on the table saw to make this groove? Uh, I've done it a thousand times before on a table saw. I like to make the groove for the quarter inch um, pieces of doors for the center panel of shaker doors on the table saw because they're always much shorter, like on these side lower cabinets, they're gonna have a shaker style door and it's gonna have a quarter inch center panel. And on those short runs or those styles and rails, they're gonna be no more than, you know, like maybe you know 22 inches uh, long and I don't know, 18, 19 inches wide. And that's easy. Those are going to be, they're machined. I process those pieces and I make them perfectly straight uh, and square at three quarters of an inch. And when I run that through the table saw, I know it's not going to move. A situation like this where you have that, that bow or that hump in the middle, as you are pushing that through the table saw, and it is a long piece, you have to consistently just keep putting that downward pressure. And as you move your hands, sometimes you could get an un even piece that's not going to go and hit that blade to the depth that you want. And then what happens is when you try to install the back panel, you're fighting with it. It's not worth it. You can do this on the router table. I don't recommend that either because it's very awkward and long and you'll still be fighting to keep the pressure down even with the feather boards. And you can't get that visual that you need to see where the bit is to put it exactly where you need it. Now there's another thing I want to show you and this is one of the main reasons that I couldn't do this on the table saw or the router table is because if you see these are the side cabs that I'm working on, right? These are going to go on the outside. If you've been following along on that built-in, that center built-in is already installed. So now these side pieces here are going to go on the outside, one on each side, and they're going to have upper bookcases. These are the face frames for those upper bookcases that will sit on top of these, which is the side piece right there. So now let me turn this around and show you. If you look here, this side, which is going to be butted up against the other case that's already installed, which is in the center, is flush in the back. Now, this side is recessed three quarters of an inch wider on the side panel for the outside. So this, with the face frame, is at 12 and three quarters. This side with the face frame is at 12. Why did I make this outside piece that's going to be visible three quarters of an inch wider? Well, there's a reason for that. Every house, I'm sure you know, has walls that are not plumb. They have floors that are not level. So when these get installed, like the center panel was installed, three quarters of an inch gap at the top of the wall out of plumb. So what that's going to do, if I put this in there on the outside where everyone can see, and then the top case goes on, and that wall is so out of plumb, so far back, that 
when I level and plumb everything, it's gonna be a three quarter inch gap at the top. You cannot fill that with caulking. It would look absolutely ridiculous. You wouldn't be able to do it. You have to mud the wool, okay? So instead of doing that, what I'm going to do is install it, not completely affix it with the screws, and then I'm gonna use scribes to scribe that to the wall. So that three quarters of an inch is going to be cut off in the actual curve of the outer plumb wall, and that will make it sit flush to the wall, and there'll be a minimal amount of caulking when it's all said and done. So to do that, I need to get both pieces to have that groove in the same spot. Now on the other piece of the upper case, that's the wider piece, which is three quarters of an inch wider. What I need to do is, after I get the quarter inch groove on the narrow piece, I have to account for that extra three quarters of an inch that I'm going to cut off so that everything is going to be completely square, level, true, and plumb once it's installed. Okay, so now let's head to the other side of the shop and I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna make this groove with a router and an adjustable fence, a guide fence, and that's gonna make everything much easier. All right, let's get to the other side of the shop and I'll show you how we do it. Okay guys, so the first thing I wanna do is take two pieces of scrap that's going to equal exact distance of where I need my groove to be from the back of the panel. Then I'll make a tick mark and then I'll set a combination square and I'll draw a line across the whole piece. It just makes it a little bit easier for me to set the edge guide on the router. Now I'll use a router with a quarter inch upcut spiral bit and a router edge guide. And it's, you can see it's attached to my vacuum. That helps get rid of the, uh, the dust a little bit because the router is a really bad offender when it comes to dust. And I'm going to route a groove in two passes just right to the edge of the line that I made. Now I'm using a plunge router for this just because I feel that I have more control over it as I go through making the groove. But you can easily use a palm router uh, with an edge guide on it as well. Now you can buy various makes and models of edge guides for your router, or you can just make your own simply out of uh, some scrap wood. You make your own jig and you don't have to spend any money. Now I'll just do a little quick test fit right here, make sure everything's good before I move on to the next piece. I'm flushing up the edges of the front of the carcass and I'm using my carpenter's pencil. That's a quick little tip there. Use the flat bar of the carpenter's pencil. It's really good to flush up edges. Once I have them flush, I'll clamp them together and I will set my edge guide with the carbide bit in the center of that groove. So then I can move that board out of the way and I know I have the exact distance, even though it's three quarters of an inch further, to set that groove on the second panel that needs to be scribed. Now, once again, I'll set the depth to halfway and route this in two passes. And now you can see as I install the back panel that the grooves are perfectly in line where they need to be. And I have just enough room to put those nailer strips on afterwards. And I still have that three quarter inch overhang on the outer panel, which is going to be scribed later on to the wall. And then I'll use some crown staples to tack that in place. Okay, so that's how we get it. Pretty simple. Once you get the hang of setting up that guide fence on the router, now you could try to do this freehand and I can guarantee you, you're not gonna get a straight line. And you're not gonna get the repeatability that you need to make these grooves consistent. You can see I have the pieces now, these side pieces exactly lined up and flush. And you can see that that groove is sitting perfect on both edges, even though they're not the same size. Now this is gonna, like I said, this will get cut off with the when I scribe it to the wall to fit it in. So if you're not following that build on Instagram or, or my uh, my Facebook page that's linked to the Instagram, I'll put those links in the description there. So make sure you follow me on there so you can see everything as it, you know it's being built because this is just too large of a project and I have to try to move a little bit faster and I can't film the whole thing. All right, so I hope you guys got something out of this. Hope you enjoyed the video. Once again, I thank you for watching and joining me in the shop today. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you like the video, definitely give it a thumbs up and I'll see you guys next time.